Blowing up the world. Dreamy. Could we do it? Carl Sagan said a nuclear war between two superpowers would be a lot like two people in a room soaked with gasoline, each holding a match in defense against the other. But in the 1983 made-for-TV family drama The Day After, it was concluded that life after a nuclear war could be possible. Yay or nay? In July 2009, David McCandless drew widespread attention for attempting to prove through ahem, isolated data sets and pretty infographics that there was no way we could blow up everyone with the amount of bombs we had. He calculated the collective blast radius of all bombs, compared that against the population density of the planet, and concluded NP. I am not the first to note nuclear bombs do more than just go boom around a town. As the mushroom cloud forms, these particles are made radioactive. For as they cool and condense, they are contaminated by residue from the bomb. These particles, when they fall back to Earth, are what we call radioactive fallout. According to most estimates, the US and Russia make up over 9,000 of the some 10,000 nukes on the planet, so a nuclear war between the two would have only slightly less effect than the whole. In such an event, between about 1-10% to of the world's population would be fortunate enough to be inside the blasts and die instantly. The rest of us will have to wait a little while longer. According to a study by Alan Robock, Luke Oman, and Georgie L. Stenchikov of the Department of Environmental Sciences at Rutgers University, the blast would release roughly 150 megatons of smoke into the atmosphere. About 10 to 25% of that smoke would be washed out in a thick black radioactive rain, poisoning the groundwater and vegetation. The remaining 75 to 90 percent of the smoke would likely be swept quickly around the planet by the prevailing winds, kicked up into the upper stratosphere, where it would remain for around six years. Six years. During those six years, the planet's average temperature would probably cool down by about 10 degrees Celsius, on par with the coldest part of the last ice age 18,000 years ago. Precipitation would likely decrease down to a fraction of what we get today, and in short, agriculture would become nearly impossible around the entire world. With no new production of food taking place for six years, most would die of starvation, if they haven't already died of radiation poisoning or eating Twinkies and Ho-Hos. And according to a study from the University of Colorado, if only a hundred Hiroshima-sized bombs were detonated, the amount of ozone in the upper atmosphere would be reduced by as much as 20% globally, with up to 70% loss in the northern latitudes, which could persist for about 10 years. Considering that our doomsday scenario involves 10 times that many nukes, there might not be any ozone layer left at all is what I'm saying. Now, let's suppose you've built yourself a bomb shelter at the South Pole, where the atmosphere is expected to be affected the least, and you've brought a partner to help you repopulate the planet once everything is blown over. The average person would normally eat about 880 pounds of food in a year, so you'll need nearly three tons of food for yourself and six tons for the two of you. And the average person drinks around 200 gallons of water in a year, so you'll need like 2400 gallons between the two of you. Bring plenty of seeds and grains for replanting later on. Read up on this beforehand, duh. After hiding out for six years, the ash will hopefully be more or less out of the atmosphere. The temperature could be mostly back to normal, but there still might not be much of an ozone layer. So you'll probably need to wear a radiation suit whenever you go outside, but you'd have to do this if you lived on Mars or the Moon, so it's not like it's all that crazy of an idea. If the ozone layer hasn't been affected too greatly, you may end up finding a place to grow your grains, and begin your new life as a subsistence farmer dealing with constant radiation sickness. Will you survive? Will anything survive? I will. So what other ways could we die as a whole before then? That's not a rhetorical question. I'm going for the long haul. If you are with me, let's plan this out ahead of time.